All right, so welcome back to the tower defense tutorial series. And in this video, we're going to be focused on spawning enemies. And it's pretty simple. It isn't really too hard. We're also going to be using uh, the dynamic size object pooling method for our enemies. And if you want to understand really how it works, uh, there will be a video uh, in the card on the top right that you can watch to really understand how it's going to work, the system in general. And yeah, so to get started, underneath the classes, we're going to create two new folders. And the first folder is going to be called enemies. And the second folder is going to be called scriptable object sources. So first, in the enemies folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp class. And this will just be called enemy. And this enemy class will be attached to, of course, enemy game objects. It will store their health, uh, their speed, and their ID. And the ID is going to be very important in this video. And in the scriptable object sources folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp script. And we're going to call this enemy summon data. And one more thing we're going to do is in our game folder underneath classes, we're going to create another C Sharp script and call this entity summoner. So this video is only going to be focused on summoning or spawning enemies. We're also going to be summoning towers, but that is something we'll go over once we get to it. So let's go over the enemy class first. So here I'm in the enemy class. So we're going to get rid of the start and update method. And we're going to create a public void called init. And init is basically just short for initialize. And the reason why we're using initialize, this kind of a function, instead of the start method, is because we're going to be handling a lot of uh, class variable initialization within our game loop and the entity spawner. And for some basic variables for our enemy, uh, we can create two public floats, one float being the max health and another float being the regular health. So basically, um, the health compared to the max health. And we're also gonna give it a public float of speed, which will be for the next video, and a public int of ID, which will be focused on this video. And in the init, for now, we could just do health equals max health. There you go. And this is basically uh, it for the enemy class for now. Now let's go on to the enemy summon data class. Alright, so here I am in the enemy summon data, and since this is going to be a scriptable object, we just got to get rid of the mono behavior here and replace it with scriptable object class. And on top of this, we're going to add in an attribute that will let us create an instance of um, uh, this uh, enemy summon data class within our assets folder, and that would be the create asset menu tag. And inside it takes in some variables here, you have the file name, and the file name can just be new um, enemy summon data, and the menu name is basically what it will display. Yeah, here, the display name for this type shown in the asset slash create menu. And I guess the menu name can be create enemy summon data. And inside of here, it's pretty simple. It just takes in a public game object of the enemy prefab and a public int of the enemy ID. And there you go. That is our enemy class and our enemy summon data class. Now let's get on to our entity summoning class, which is the main premise of this video. All right, so here I am in the entity summoner. And what we're going to do is First, get rid of the update method. We don't really need that. And we're going to create a couple of dictionaries uh, for this class. So the first dictionary is going to be a public static dictionary of integer and game object. And now uh, this is basically uh, ba the, the separate components of our enemy summon data class. The int being the enemy ID and the game object being the reference to the enemy prefab. We could just call this enemies enemy prefabs. We're also going to create another dictionary and this will be a dictionary uh, taking an int as an ID and a Q this time and inside of the queue it will be type of enemy and this will be the enemy object pools 
So yeah, this is how uh, this object pooling system is going to work. Since there will be multiple different types of enemies that we're going to want to summon, we're going to have to create multiple different queues based off of the enemy IDs. So now in our start method, we can initialize these two. So enemy prefabs equals a new int dictionary of int game object. Same for the object pools. Oh, and one more uh, thing that we're going to need is a list of the enemies in game. So we do a public static list and inside of here we just put in enemy class and we put enemies in game and this list is to keep track of all the enemies that are currently alive within the scene and we can also initialize this in our start method now before we go any further we're going to have to now uh, create um, the actual enemies themselves so let's go back into to do so all right so back in the scene we're going to create our first enemy for our tower defense so to do so, we go into our hierarchy, create a new empty game object. It could call whatever, but since this is the first enemy, I'm just going to call this the basic. Or just a standard, not so special enemy. And I'm going to line it up with the path over here. Have it nice and floating. There you go. Move it to the center here. And now what I'm going to do is click on add component and put in the enemy class that uh, we created earlier. And I can just set its max health to 5 and its speed to 4. And the max health and all of this will be handled in later episodes. We're just focusing on spawning the enemies themselves. So there, the basic is now all set up. Now we just can just create a cube to give uh, the enemy a nice visual here. And now I want to give him a special material. So in the rendering folder we created earlier, and underneath the materials, we're going to create another folder. I'm going to call this entities inside of the entities folder, another folder, and call this enemies. And since there's probably going to be a lot of enemies in here, they may have multiple materials. Maybe one enemy has multiple parts, maybe like arms or something like that. So we're going to create specific folders for the specific enemies. So this is just a basic enemy. So just create another folder, call it basic, and create a new material within it, and just call this base. And I guess I'll just make him a nice red. Give it that classic menacing look. And turn on GPU instancing. Since there will probably be a lot of instances of this on screen, especially in a, power, a tower defense. Alright, so our first enemy is all set up. Now what we're going to do is store its prefab. So within our assets, we're going to create a folder called its prefabs. And inside of our prefabs folder, we're going to create another folder called this entities. Inside of our entities folder, we're going to create another folder called this enemies. And inside of here, we're finally going to put in our basic enemy. And there you go. Now we can just uh, simply get rid of this basic enemy over here. Delete him real quick. And there you go. We now have our basic enemy all prefabbed and ready for duplication onto our scene. Now what we're going to do is need to create the scriptable object containing this prefab of the enemy and the ID of the enemy that we want. So first we're going to go to our assets again, create a folder, and this time we're going to call it resources. And the reason why we're putting it in a folder called the resources is because we can actually load assets on runtime through this folder. So resources, and in here we're going to create another folder, call it enemies. And inside of here we're going to create, go to create here and you'll see that our create enemy summon data uh, will now show and this is basically what we um, created earlier in, within our enemy summon data class which was a uh, type scriptable object so I can just call this basic and I can set the ID to 1 the first enemy in the game and set the prefab to the basic that we want and there you go now we are basically all set up to get spawning so now let's go back into uh, our entity spawner script and let's continue on alright so we're now back in here and what we're going to want to do is first get an array of all the enemies within our resources folder which is of type enemy summon data over here so to do that we just do enemy summon data array and we can call this enemies enemies for now yeah equals resources dot load all and we're gonna pass in a type of enemy summon data which is what we want 
and inside of these parentheses it takes in a path so well, when we are going through the resources dot a load or any of those functions it's basically doing like um, going through all of the different uh, directories that you have until you re until it reaches the resources folder and then it puts in a slash at the end oh, whoops yeah and then it puts in a slash at the end so we don't have to do like this and then slash enemies we just type in the name of our folder and our name of our folder within resources I believe is just enemies so we can just put that there and there you go and if we debug dot log uh, let's we only have one um, enemy summon data class within the enemies folder so we can just do enemies zero dot name if we debug dot log the name of the asset so yeah, have a debug.log, then you'll see that it actually loaded uh, the asset that we have saved within our enemies folder. So if we go back into and test this, here you go. So you see uh, within our enemies folder, it says basic. And if we now attach our um, entity summoner script onto our game master and we hit play, you can now see if we show our debug here you see that it shows the name of the asset that we have saved in our enemies folder which is pretty cool we can load assets on runtime so now that we have references to all of the enemies within our enemies folder in resources we can now use this data that we have to create the specific amount of queues of, of all the different types or the specific amount of enemy prefabs of each type so first we're going to want to populate all of the enemy prefabs so to do this, we just do for each um, enemy summon data, enemy in enemies, we do enemy prefabs. Yeah, enemy prefabs dot add the enemy dot ID, enemy ID, and the game object value would be the enemy dot enemy prefab. And also um, for our enemy object pools here, we're going to add in. Uh, with the key of the enemy dot enemy ID and a new queue of enemy and there you go so let's say we have 10 enemies in our game and we all load them like we load all of the enemies so what we're going to do is go over every single enemy we're going to uh, give the dictionary of all the enemy prefabs with their given IDs and we're going to create specific empty object pools for each ID so that is basically the start function and to have a little bit more control over of how this will run or basically make this more cohesive with the loop that we have we can just uh, instead of having it void start we can just make this a public static void of init and we can have a private static bool outside so a private static bool of is initialized and we check if it is not initialized then we will run this code and set it to initialized so initialized is initialized equals true and if it is then we will just do debug dot log and we can just do um, entity summoner uh, this class is already initialized in all caps to make it look cool alright so now that the initialize is already let's make the uh, function for actually summoning uh, the enemy so it's gonna return enemy just in case you know we want to have a reference to it once we summon it so public static enemy and we can call this summon enemy and it will take in an integer of enemy ID and now the first thing we're going to do is create a new enemy variable and call this summoned enemy and this is what we will return so we'll return the summoned enemy now the first thing we're going to need to do is check if this enemy ID uh, actually exists if this enemy really exists so to do that we can just check if its prefab um, is stored with the key in our enemy's prefab dictionary so we can do if enemy prefabs dot contains key of enemy ID then we will just uh, go on with our a little summoning uh, code and if it doesn't then we'll just simply return null and debug.log 
and just do entity summoner enemy with ID of we could just do some string interpolation does not exist there you go and pass in our enemy ID and there you go so first we check if uh, our enemy prefabs contains the key of enemy ID if it doesn't then we're just going to return null and say hey this does not exist but if it does, then what we're going to do is check um, our enemy object pools. Um, if there are any enemies that are within that queue with the ID that are waiting to be spawned or are basically already instanced but are currently inactive and idle. So to do that, we just do queue of enemy. And we could just do referenced queue equals enemy object pools and pass in our enemy ID. And with our reference queue, we just do if referenced queue dot count is greater than zero, which means that there are enemies waiting to spawn. Then we will simply dequeue the enemy, dequeue enemy, and initialize. And but if there isn't, then we will simply instantiate new instance of enemy and initialize. So for dequeuing the enemy and initializing, we just do uh, create a new variable of type enemy, or actually, yeah, actually no, we do summon enemy equals referenced queue dot dq, and within the enemy class where we have public void in it, we simply call that function. So we just do summoned enemy dot init to initialize it, and there you go. Now for the instantiating part, what we do is game object. We call this um, new enemy equals our enemy prefabs, and we index it with our given ID. So enemy ID dot there like that, and with our enemy prefabs of enemy ID, we will uh, just instantiate a new instance of it. So we do space and instantiate pass in our prefab and for now we can just stick with vector 3.0 and quaternion.identity and there you go we create a new instance of the enemy and now we set our summoned enemy to our new enemy dot get component of the enemy class and there you go this is the summoning code so uh, whenever we call to summon an enemy, we pass an enemy ID. We then create a new variable called summon enemy, so we can keep our code nicer and clean. And after that, we then check if the enemy prefabs contains this enemy ID. If it doesn't contain the ID, then the enemy basically does not exist, and it'll just debug.log this and return null. If it does exist, then we're going to grab the queue from the enemy object pools with the ID, check if there are enemy, check if there are any enemies left within the queue. If there are, then we're simply just going to dequeue it and reinitialize the enemy. And if there aren't, then we'll create a new instance of the enemy based off of the prefab and initialize it through here. So don't forget that, summon enemy.init. And there you go. And once all this operation is done, then we will simply return our summoned enemy. So now let's incorporate this with our game loop. So here I am in the game loop manager class. And to really put this apart, uh, or make uh, the enemy summoner a part of our game loop, we're first going to need to initialize it in the start method. So we just do entity summoner dot init to actually initialize it. And uh, underneath our I enumerator for the game loop, we're going to create a public static void of uh, nq enemy to summon or NQ enemy ID to summon. And it'll take an integer of ID. And on top of our loop should end variable that we created a while back, we're gonna create a private static queue. Q. And this will take in the type of int, which is of enemy ID. And we can call this enemy IDs to summon. And of course we initialize this in our start function. So MID to summon equals a new queue of int. And inside of our NQ enemy ID to summon, we're going to do enemy IDs to summon dot NQ our ID. So we basically 
uh, put this in line to be summoned uh, whenever it reaches our spawn enemies part of the loop. And speaking of which, we're actually going to get started on this part right now. So for spawning enemies, we just have to check if our enemy IDs to summon count is greater than zero, or if there are any enemy IDs that should be summoned, or are currently being requested to be summoned. So to do that, we just do a simple if, if enemy IDs to summon dot count is greater than zero, then we will simply go over all the different um, integers that are within this queue and uh, summon them using our summon enemy function within our entity summoner. So we do for int i is equal to zero, i is less than enemy ids to summon dot count i plus plus, and we then do entity summoner dot summon enemy, and we pass in enemy ids to summon dot dq, and there you go. That is how we are going to summon enemies in our game. It uses object pooling and yeah, it's fairly optimized. So to test this, we can uh, guess create, um, I guess we can create a void, call this summon test. And inside of here, we can just do and queue enemy ID to summon and pass in the ID of one. And we're doing one because earlier in the video, we set up our enemy summon data that we put in our resources folder to have an ID of one. And within our start function, after we initialize it, we can do, or after we initialize our entity summoner, we can do invoke repeating, and we pass in our function here, so summon test, and we start it at zero and repeat it, let's say every one second. And after we uh, right, and before we start running our summon test function, we start our game loop. So start coroutine, pass in our game loop function, and there you go. Now if we go back into Unity to test the summoning, hit play, you can now see that we are now spawning enemies. You can see in the inspector that it's slowly increasing, and if I go back into scene, you can see I can move them all around over here. We are now spawning enemies, yay. Now let's set up uh, for when we want to uh, remove enemies. So to do that within our entity summoner, we can just create another public static void and call this remove enemy. And we can pass in a reference to the enemy we want to remove. So enemy, um, enemy to remove. And we can call this, but first, before we do that, uh, we're going to go back to our enemies in game list. And after we initialize it, every time we summon an enemy, we have to add uh, our summoned enemy uh, to this list. So we have a reference to all the enemies that are alive within the scene. So in order to remove an enemy, we simply just uh, grab its queue here. So object pools, yeah, enemy object pools, enemy to remove to remove dot id and to initialize an enemy's id we just do uh, go back to our summon enemy code summon enemy dot id equals enemy id and this enemy id is the id that we passed in to be summoned and there you go so yeah so enemy object pools enemy to remove the id dot and queue so we basically put our enemy to remove back into the queue which makes it um, idle and inactive and basically waiting uh, for whenever it needs to be you know used so uh, we requeue it and after that we do enemy to remove dot game object dot set active to false and this is to really um, disable the game object but keep it instanced onto the processor and yeah, keep it nice and optimized and make sure that not too many large or big uh, deallocations or allocations are happening a lot within a game. And if you think about it, when you go to late game, um, object pooling is going to be very, very powerful because uh, when you're in late game of a tower defense, a lot of enemies will die. They will be spawned and killed maybe like every like half a second or so because of like the sheer amount of action going on. So object pooling um, will help prevent any sort of 
uh, frame drops or frame spikes or freezes because um, it doesn't deallocate or reallocate. It keeps it instance on the processor and in um, the game in general. So it doesn't have to like do any sort of complex calculation to uh, actually create a new instance. We just save it for later. So we're basically this is us just basically saving our enemies for later. So to really test this, we can go to the game loop manager and we can create another function and call this remove test. And here we can just do uh, we can just call this uh, remove enemy function. So we could just do if entity summoner dot enemies in game or enemies yeah enemies in game yeah enemies in game to entity summoner dot enemies in game the count is greater than zero then we're going to uh, remove it so we do um, entity summoner dot remove enemy and we do entity summoner dot enemies in game and to get the index of um, a random enemy we just do random dot range zero to um, entity summoner dot enemies in game dot count like so and we can do the same invoke repeating call but to this function so we do remove test and we can have it call I guess every let's say half a second and one more thing since we deactivate them when we remove them we have to re-enable them when we uh, summon them so after we initialize them once we DQ them uh, we're going to do uh, summon enemy dot game object dot sit active to true and there you go now if we go back to unity to test this we hit play we basically now have a completed spawning and removing system for our tower defense so it's pretty hard to see um, any uh, enemies get put into the queue, you know, like they're deactivated and everything because the spawning system is going pretty quickly right now. But regardless, the spawning system will definitely be uh, displayed when we actually have enemies moving around. And we're going to be going over uh, moving enemies in the next video. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you then. Goodbye.